OMG, I am so excited to make this video. I am going to be interviewing someone that literally changed my business and my life, and I'm so excited to introduce you to Chanel Yarber of Bright Girl Media. Chanel Yarber is not only an entrepreneur and a success in her own right, she is literally behind the company Bright Girl Media that changed my social media game and has taken me to the next level and increased my money in the process. I'm gonna be sitting down with Chanel. She's going to be sharing with you all of her secrets, all of her tips, and all of her tricks to take your social media game to the next level and start making money from your social media. Let's go. Noel. Yeah, she can fix that. If you gotta get it done, no, you need to do it better. Well, she can fix that. Yeah, she can fix that. Investment to get back, trying to get a big step. She can fix that. Let's fix that. So welcome, welcome, Chanel Yarber. I am so excited to interview you today. I feel like you are just a successful entrepreneur, and now you are coaching and mentoring and teaching all of what you do. You've helped me with my success. You've helped numerous people become successful with their businesses. And so I am just so happy that you decided to do this interview with me, and you're going to share all of your secrets like we always do. So let's get to it. Yes. Yes, yes. I'm happy to be here. So thank you for having me. Yes. So as beauty people know, you know, obviously we were working people. We used to work for someone and work in other companies in corporate America. You and I both share that same story where we worked in corporate America and now we are successful entrepreneurs and we also help other people that want to get into, you know, their own business. And so talk to me about your best secrets, because I feel like when you came into my business and why I wanted to interview and why I wanted you to share this with everyone is you really changed my business in so many ways that people just do not know with marketing, with social media, you know, just the information and the analytics. It's so just so much. So let's talk about that. Let's really get into that and let's really spill the tea and tell people why it is that most businesses fail and what you do differently. My secret sauce, if I have one, is something that's so basic, but it's so overlooked. And that's really just consistency. So a lot of times people, you know, they start businesses and they start out strong and they're really excited and they're ready to go. And they do something two or three times and they expect a result. Yeah. So and true. That's not how it happens. So like, true. Or just want a result in 30 days. And I, why don't I have 10,000 yeah. subscribers? <laughs> it is ridiculous. And I, I blame the social media culture that I actually am a part of. Um, but I blame the social media entrepreneurship culture for selling these dreams that like you can do this in, t in you know, 14 days. And it's like it takes some time to really um, not only get some momentum going, but also to be able to track. And like you were speaking about the analytics and be able to kind of dig in and nail what is working, what isn't working and tweak that thing and just continue to be um, consistent. And so. I tell my clients all the time, when you were a baby or if you have children, they didn't stand up one day and just take off running. They right. crawled, they got up, <laughs> so they true. pulled up on something. Right. And, and they fell they, down, uh, and they got back down. Right, they fell down you know? and you watched them. Yeah, so um, my, thing, my whole thing is really just kind of setting um, the expectation that yes, it's gonna take a little bit of time, but once you get going, just like your toddler, once they start moving, they're in everything and they're all over the place. So um, just give yourself some time and be consistent and don't give up at, after the first one or two times that you try something and, and it doesn't just like go viral. Right, right. So let's talk about that because I, 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 we know the answer and I, I think you know the answer. Why do most businesses fail? Let's just answer that question right up the top so we can really teach people. Why do most businesses fail? It's a couple reasons. Um, but it lands back to my first answer uh, of what I said is that they don't have enough staying power, to be honest. Yeah. Um, they don't have enough staying power, whether it's mon monetary, you know, starting something on a shoestring budget. And I won't lie. I started my business with eight hundred dollars. Yeah. And <laughs> now, almost nine years later, right. I'm still here standing strong. That's right. Um, but you got to have a strategy behind you. You got to know what you're doing. You can't just you know, have an idea and then tomorrow it just turns into something. 
And so that's why I really enjoy coaching um, in your program is because I feel like we give people a leg up to give them that runway to get themselves going. And so if you don't have the know-how or you don't have the staying power or you don't have the money to continue to push into something to make it bloom and blossom over time, then you, you're kind of cutting yourself off at the knees if you're trying to get out here. And I agree. I agree. So let's expound on that. Let's really, like I said, let's really get into it. So you said a couple of key things there, like an amazing things. And like I said, you helped me so much with my business that I really want you to just tell the truth, you know, absolutely. You know, when I started, I was successful as a business person, but I was not popular. <laughs> Can, can we can we fairly say that like Noel had no popularity whatsoever? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I remember. Right, just I no remember. You didn't even really want to get on Instagram. It was funny to me. Was, he was like, I don't want to be. I don't wanna right. post. So so say it. Tell the truth. Like I said, I'm I'm okay with my flaws, and I, I want people to know what I did wrong so they can do it right. What did I say that was completely stupid and wrong? <laughs> I don't want to what. You did not want to be on social media. I did not. Like you, you were like, I, I already got money. I already got a business. Like, I don't need to, <laughs> I don't need to do this. And I'm like, no, people need to know who you are. Like you are a rare gem and a rare jewel. And, um, I felt, I just felt like everybody should know Noel and everybody should have a Noel in their corner. Oh. So for me, it was a no brainer. Like, why wouldn't you want everybody to know how, how awesome you are? Right. You're like, mm, I'm right. okay. I got like, I got these businesses, <laughs> I got this property and I'm okay. And so it's funny. And the reason that I actually enjoy working with you is because you kind of came at this from a reverse engineer standpoint where most people come to me wanting to be popular. Yeah. And I'm like, OK, what do you have behind you? What's the value that you're going to bring? Yeah. 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 People just want to, you know, I want, you know, 20,000 followers. <laughs> For what? For like, what? what do you do, <laughs> to do what with <laughs> that warrants people to want to follow you? What are you going to do with those people that are um, following but you? But you had that already and you right. wanted to hide it. And so it was just like, come on, girl, get out here <laughs> and let people know who you are. And so that um, became not only, a for me, a challenge, and I love taking on a, a good challenge, but it also became a thing like you have to let people know who she is. You have to take it off of her hands because a lot of people are not social media people they They're are not, not you know people that want this stuff and we, we and there's such a misunderstanding i think as a business person so this is why i said this is the this is the gym this is like the million dollar you know giveaway that we're giving everybody here listening to this is i was a business person and i thought i didn't need social media because i did business and that is how stupid and ridiculous i was in my thought and you you shed the light and you opened up my income so much by letting me give value to more people that that was the part that i, I think that i was just missing and i i did not get the connection social media for me seemed like and again i'm telling you all of the things that i thought that was wrong i thought social media was where people went to fake it i thought social media was where you just flaunt things and you go be flossy i did not see social media as the true tool for business that it is so let's get into that because like i said now that we've established no it was a complete idiot and getting on social media um, you know, four times my income, 4X in just like a year, 4X my income just from doing these things on social media. So I'm going to give you guys the payoff that it, I was wrong. You want to do social media and this is the person that helped me. <laughs> so you should listen to her. So let's kind of go back because like I said, I think people have those same stupid ideas that I did that social media is not where you go to find clients. Social media is not where you go to get business. Social media is not where you grow your business and completely wrong and on all different reasons. So let's talk about Instagram first because that was where I was just, no, 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 no. This is, Instagram is for teeny boppers that, you know, flex in with fake Rolexes. That's what I thought. I was, that's what I thought. So let's talk about Instagram for business and how you changed my mind about Instagram and what you really can do with Instagram, just as an example. Let me first say that your perception was um, something that I still <laughs> perceive and I see it yeah. because I see so many people that are out here on social media and they're pushing these businesses or brands forward. And like I said, they don't have they don't have the foundation or they don't have any any real wealth power. behind them. Yeah. Um, to, to prove it. And so for somebody like 
you or me, even me, you know, I have a master's degree in, in media management. I've been doing this my entire career. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. I don't want to say we take for granted what we know, um, but we we are solid in what we know. And so we don't feel like we have to prove ourselves like some people do. Right. Um, but in order to compete, especially now that we're in this crazy Correct. pandemic and we're not Correct. Able to and we're not able to leave our homes. I'm so happy you got me on social media because let's think about that. My income would have tanked in many areas had I not had a podcast and, you know, Instagram followers and a YouTube channel and, you know, different affiliates from like, oh, my gosh. So keep going. Sorry. I just had to yeah, reiterate no, that. You're fine. It you're fine. Definitely but it, it what definitely should be doing. It is important right now. And we're so interconnected um, via the Internet, via social media. That is where people are. And I tell people. Um, and I said this on my own, you know, video, you may not be a social media person, but your business needs to be on social media because that is where the people are. Correct. So if you think about it, you know, way back in the day, like olden times, people had like, what is it? The, um, the, the farmer's market or whatever, right? That was where people. Or the mall. Let's even go back 10 years. Everybody needed to go to the mall. Now we yeah. have people now. were there. That's where the traffic is. That's right. where, you know, people can see something and they're like, oh, I want to buy this. Well, that's what social media is cool. now. It's like people aren't walking around just bumping into Noel on a regular basis. And even if they did, right. how many people would you reach on one day to be able to make yourself, Thank you know, you. six figures say in a day or again. something like that? Say, and, oh and my it's gosh, very, say that again. That is the part that I think I was missing. One was the part that you said about social media, their ad agencies, Instagram, let, let's just be honest. And you probably won't say it, but I'm gonna say it. Instagram is an, a social, it's an ad agency. Google is an ad agency. Facebook is an ad agency. YouTube is an ad agency. This is a place where you can run ads, where you can market your business. And I just did not get that connection because I was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> because I was stupid. And that's the thing, like, it levels the playing field. Because back in the day, you used to have to spend twenty, forty thousand dollars to, you know, do a commercial right. on TV or something right. like that, or to get a billboard. Right. And it's like, yeah. yeah, you mean to tell me you could spend two hundred and fifty dollars and you could, you know, on a Facebook ad and you can get right however many thousands of dollars out of right. that one ad? Yeah. Like, think about the return on investment and the reach that you have. Yes. And so I so I that's another people, point. So that's another media, second point. So if social you're not media. Online, you're not in business because if nobody knows that you exist, you don't. You don't exist. You're right. <laughs> you don't exist. You do not so. exist. That's a whole other point. We're gonna get to that one. Put a pin in that one because knowing people, knowing you exist and your business exists. So one, we said social media is an ad agency. That's number one. Two, social media is where your customers are. This is this forum where all of these people, billions of people all across the earth are on this thing and now they have this opportunity to see you. I don't know how I missed that memo. They didn't teach me that in my business program when I got my MBA and all this other stuff, but I missed that and I was again wrong. You So that was another great point. This is where people were and you, you really convinced me of that and showed me really easily. And then another third point that you just brought because I just want to make sure everyone is getting this is how inexpensive it is to market through social media. Again, you can pay for ads and they're very inexpensive or you can put out content absolutely free and that will get you customers and clients. So super inexpensive. So talk about that because I know we started with money and we said, you know, staying power and people don't have a lot of money when they get started. And so they gotta be very careful with their dollars. Let's talk about how social media can really drive your business, make you a ton of money without spending much. So I tell people you either if you're in business, you have one of two things to spend. You either have time or you have money. That's right. And so if you have money, I highly recommend, you know, getting a strong uh, social media person that yeah, can help you because you. most people just they they think they know social media because they're used <laughs> they to using it as a personal <laughs> thing. But on the business side, it's different. So I highly recommend getting a consultant and putting your money toward advertising on social media because it will take you so much farther, so much faster. But if you don't have a budget and you don't have a whole lot of money, that's okay too because now you have time to spend and that's where you go into your organic content. And if you're consistent on that, I'll be honest, I 
I probably spend $300 a month on on ads max because I just like to cap my budget because I like to see where my money is going and make sure that I'm getting a return. That's right. Um, which really is not a lot of money when I consider what the return is and what I'm charging for my services and things like that. That's right. And so... And it's a write-off, and we I, I teach you guys about business credit. So if you haven't, of course, I'm going to put a link to the entire playlist on business credit because this is something that you can get bit funds for your business to pay for your ads and your marketing in your business's name so you don't have to feel like you can't market and advertise your business because this is what we're talking about. It's so important. So sorry, keep going. Absolutely. No, you're good. So um, like I was talking about, if you have the time and you want to do the organic stuff, that's honestly where 99% of my clientele comes from. It's my organic content. It's not even the stuff that I really spend the money on. And so I spend a lot of time letting people know who I am, sharing my expertise, connecting with people, commenting on, you know, social media. I spend, you know, probably about 30 minutes a day doing so. But I have the time. That is the time investment that I'm putting it into it instead of the money investment. So if you don't have the money, don't worry about it. Just spend the time and get consistent on posting and, you know, engaging with people and getting to know people and bringing them into your world. And then now they feel like they know you. And that's what business is all about, right? Mm. People do business with those that they know, they like, and they trust. That's right. right. I love it. Period. So Period. if you are willing to get out there and be consistent on social media and share who you are, um, share your expertise, let people know that they can trust you with their hard-earned money, they'll spend it. That's and, right. And that's just the way that it works. Love it. Okay, so let's get keep going because I, I know people are loving this content. So let yeah. me share my true story because this is this is you are the person that helps. So they are getting it straight from the horse's mouth. This is the person. This is Chanel Yarber, guys, Bright Girl Media, you know, who now works with Noel Randall Coaching. But we met three, four years ago when I was probably a nobody. And like I said, I was always a person that was more rich than they were famous. I always say I know lots of celebrities now, athletes, you know, doctors, attorneys, all of these high level people. And there are some people that are more rich than they are famous. And there are some people that are more famous than they are rich. And my perspective, I was more rich than I was famous. So the thing about it, though, you can do it the other way. And we know that. And, and based on your expertise, I know that you can take people that don't have money because I don't want people to feel like, oh, well, Noel, you have plenty of money to pay Chanel to, to, to run your stuff. But here's the thing, the truth. I was an idiot, so I was resistant to some of the things that she was saying, especially the posting. So again, I'm going to tell the truth. That's what this interview is about, because this is the one that changed my life with the social media. So tell the truth about what my issues were getting started and why it took so long, for example, my Instagram to grow. Why did it take so long for my Instagram to grow? <laughs> you didn't want to show up. <laughs> Say that you again. You didn't want to show up. Say it again. I'm like, Noel, you need to go live. You need to show your face. You need to yeah. tell people what you're doing. You need to show them your properties. You need, and you were like, mm, mm. I, don't I don't want them in my business. I'm I'm like, like, I was such a recluse with that. Well, that's a part of the problem. Like I said, I had a little money and I was broke. Remember, I was broke. And then I had a little money. I was afraid if I told people that I would lose it again or they would laugh at me or they would be waiting for my downfall. So these were my issues that I needed to work on. So if you have your issues that you need to work on, get over them. It's silly. You're hurting your business. Oh, That's first and God. foremost. Let me tell you, what you just said is worth this entire interview. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna speak out. Look, since you're spilling your tea, I'm gonna spill my Hey, so like I said, I've been in business now. It'll be nine years and five months. Okay. Um, and in the first probably six years of my business, I never wanted to show my face. Ooh. And I wasn't even rich, okay? So I, I didn't even have a leg to stand on to say, like, oh, I got money, so I don't need to do this. It was a mindset thing. Yes. Okay? It was an exposure thing. You feel like you're exposing yourself. Yeah, I feel, I feel vulnerable. I don't it want to silly. sell all my business. And it's like... Then what are you, you sharing? Really what value are you bringing? Yeah, first of all. Right. <laughs> right. But don't like, don't feel like you have to. Right. I don't have to show you brushing show my teeth. Whole entire world. Right. I don't have to show you brushing my teeth or, or me yelling at my kids or, you know, um, any of that stuff. But you got to show more of yourself. So so talk to it. T tell, tell how you started pulling me out because you started showing me some analytics. 
Um, you know, we, we, let's, let's go through that journey. Cause I think that, that we, you know, we've grown the Instagram. I would have grown a lot faster if I had just listened to you. I know that for a fact. <laughs> um, the YouTube grew very fast, but that was the thing that I enjoyed. So we're not even going to go to the YouTube or the podcast or any of the things that I grew really fast because those are the things that I enjoyed. But again, I want to go to just straight up social media, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and posting and the importance of a business owner posting and showing what they do talk about how important that is for your business yes and so for you when you're talking about the analytics and all of that stuff it was a no-brainer i already knew this was going to happen but i had to show you things. <laughs> <laughs> i had to like prove it to you that when your face showed up yeah and your voice showed up yeah people connected right and so it was like I can post a million memes all day long or, you know, quotes and this and that, but people wanted Noel. Yeah. They wanted to know who you were. And so when you're, you know, posting content, and this is for anybody, yeah. always, always, always pay attention to your analytics, especially on Instagram. You know, you can go into your insights and you can go into like the last 30 days or even the last year. And you can see which posts really resonate with right. people, what got the you know likes, comments, shares, and saves, yep. and which ones just fell flat. And you start to realize what people want from you. Right. And that can inform your content strategy from there because now you're like, okay, they like four posts, like I ha they blew up yeah. because yeah. my face was on them. Yeah. yeah. Right. So now let me let me show right. my face every day. Correct. <laughs> because I want right. to continue to grow and I want to continue for, you know, for people to like my comments and, um, you know, get my content out here to more and more people. And so that's pretty much how um, and why I was sharing all those numbers and everything with you and those reports to, to prove my point. Like, yeah, this is you were. It, you was, it was right there. Like you see you po I posted a quote. You see no engagement. You see, I told you to just show a picture of you in front of the property. See how many people like this. See how many people watch this. And it was really, really clear which posts, which stories, which um, lives, which, which ones people liked and which ones they did not. And the data was right there. It was not anything I had to wait for. I, need, I didn't need a report, you know, going back to corporate America. I didn't need a committee to meet. It's right there for you to see immediately yep. it's like immediate feedback so that so i think if we have to summarize just these two points so that people are keeping up with the two important things with social media number one is consistency and then number two is adjusting based on the data the analytics reviewing your analytics would you say yes absolutely, absolutely. so let's talk about consistency because we started quickly Oh. And you think you're doing something and then you look up and you look at your numbers and you're like, oh, my stuff is tanking like this. Nobody even cared about this. Yeah. And it's so weird. Like you, you're, everybody's audience is different. That's true. Uh, but once you really like lean into those numbers and you start seeing what people want from you. It it's makes easy. Creating content that it much is easier easy. and it makes you want to do it because you're like, oh, my God, I got a thousand you know, people to respond to this one piece of content. Yes. So it, it kind of fires you up. It does. It does. It's two main things that I got from social media when I really got into it and stopped um, thinking that I shouldn't share my business and I shouldn't share my life and that, you know, social media was stupid. When I get when I got rid of those three things, I saw an immediate opportunity and it was actually more fun. I'm going to tell you even a bonus. The things that I like to post is what other people like to receive too. That's the hilarity of it. When I'm just being myself real quick, quick picture, quick, whatever, no makeup, no script, no this, no that. That's the stuff people like. So it doesn't even take much preparation. So it's like, wait, why aren't you doing something that you don't have to actually prepare for? It doesn't cost you any money and gets you customers and clients. So this is an amazing point, getting out of your comfort zone. I want to take a quick side note and explain to you how important it is to get out of your comfort zone because it is really what saved me. As Chanel shared with you, I was a disaster with social media. I didn't think that I should put my face on social media. I didn't want to come on social media. I just wanted to put quotes and a couple other posts on social media. I didn't want to talk or show my face. I needed to get out of my comfort zone and I'm going to tell you why. One, it increased my business exponentially. When I started putting myself out there on social media and really using social media as the ad agency that it is for my business, my business 
exploded. Two, it was really getting out of my comfort zone that allowed me to make money during the pandemic. During the pandemic, everything was shut down. Had I not gotten out of my comfort zone and started being on social media and making virtual products, my business would have went down during the pandemic. But because I got out of my comfort zone, got on social media, started doing things that put me out there virtually, not only was I able to make it through the pandemic, I actually thrived during it. So start getting out of your comfort zone. Start feeling the fear and do it anyway. Okay, so before we get into some of this, I gotta tell them, they, you guys, we're gonna keep spilling some tea. So I have another great question for you because I want you, again, we're spilling it, we're spilling it. They're gonna watch this whole thing and listen to this whole thing because we are just giving gems. What's your big secret? So you took me, I had nothing. I had no, I don't even know it. I don't even think I knew the logins for my Instagram. <laughs> When we had it, I had an Instagram, I had a Facebook, I still have a Twitter, I think. You know, you didn't really work on my Twitter, so my Twitter is a little, uh, but we're working on that now that I know the power of all of this. What's your, give me your best secret for free right now. <laughs> I feel like you put me on the spot. That's, That's right. Um, <laughs> my, my best secret, honestly, is kind of all of what we've been talking about bottled up into one thing. Okay. And so it's one, testing testing a bunch of different stuff, seeing what lands, seeing what works, taking those numbers, applying it again and saying, okay, people like this type of content, this is all I'm going to serve them. And then taking the posts that have the highest numbers. Yeah. And Instagram will take, like, they give you the They literally give it to you. They tell you how to do it. Yeah. Because um, they'll, they'll send you a little note, a notification. Yeah. They'll say, this post is doing 80% better than everything else. Right. Okay, so now that I know that this has, like, if this is sprinting out in front of everything, now I'm going to put the boosters on it. And I'm going to go ahead and put money behind it. Right. I and love so it. That, that takes that piece of content that much further in front of that many more people. And so you've already like came out the starting blocks. I'm thinking of like track because I remember right, tracks. But right. You came out of the starting block strong and you're like outpacing everybody already. So now let me like put a joke into it with the money and I don't have to spend a whole lot of money because it's already performing well. So that's how I kind of manage budgets. And okay. so that you're not spending like hundreds of thousands of dollars on ads. You know, you spend 10, $20 and you can get so much farther that much faster. Now you're hitting my point because you know I'm, I'm more of the money lady. So let I'm gonna I have a big secret because I, I think you're not really telling my big secret. So from the YouTube and the the Instagram and the Facebook and we're gonna get into this, giving something away for free, giving something away for free, giving value and teaching something and giving value, whether you're teaching them how to, you know, put on their makeup or how to get the best kid song or what song makes your kids stop crying or how to potty train a dog or whatever it is that you know well that you're teaching or you're, you're giving on. Giving free good information, I think was my big secret and then giving something away for free. And I know you have something to give away for free. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but this, let's talk about that because I, to me, that's the secret sauce of social media and how I got so many clients, customers, partnerships, joint ventures, affiliates, uh, you know, just, just, blah, just a flood of business coming in from social media by doing what? Let's talk about the freebies and the giveaways and you know, how you engage with people to get them interested in what you got. So what I want to say about that is it's absolutely true. You want, to, you want to give people what they want before you give them what you want, Ooh. right? So you want to sell to them because you want to make money. That's right. But don't come out all salesy because right. people get turned off by right. that. So if you show them that you're valuable without ever asking them for a dollar, they're going to they're gonna follow you and they're going to put you. Uh, hitch their wagons to you, you know, right. and they're going to continue to stay. With you're, you, you, you nailed it. And I think we could spend five minutes going on. You're not going on social media to sell. That is not what we're talking about. There is no selling. There's no salesiness. But you have to bring value, okay? You have to give value because I need to get you off of those social medias. I need you off of YouTube, off of Instagram, off of podcast, wherever you're listening to me. I'm trying to get you off of there. I want your email address. I want your phone number. So I can now 
I can talk to you. Now I, you get what I'm saying? From a business perspective, we call that business that you own versus business that you rent. So if I have a YouTube channel and I got a million people, YouTube owns those people until I can get them into my business and into my you know, world. So I gotta do what? Give you something free, give you value so that you come to my website. So you hit my, my landing pages, you hit my squeeze pages, you hit, you know, so I can get your info. So let's pivot because again, I said, I'm sharing, you know, I'm gonna just tell it all cause I'm already rich. <laughs> how, tell me, how, talk to me how you, 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 you got me to realize, okay, you're looking at these posts and these many people engaged with it, you know? So I'm like, oh, okay, good. I want them to engage with it because I want them to click here. So that, I mean, from Instagram, that's making sure that you have a clear call to action. And I tell people all, you know, wherever you are, always give a clear call to action. If you have somebody's attention, yeah. that is like, that's priceless. So what does call to action for some of us, you know, some of our newbies listening, watching, what does a call, what is a clear call to action expert? Come on. <laughs> it's telling people what you want them to do. That's right. Simple as that. So whether it's click here to do this or call me to do that. Yeah, that's or, right. Sometimes I'll tell people, DM me if you want that's this right. information. Whatever you want them to do to get them to engage with you one-on-one, -on -one, schedule a call with me. That's, right. a, that's a call to action. Correct. Download this yes. you know, free workbook. That's a call to action. Right. That's it. So you always want to tell people, if you have their attention, you want them to do something. Right. Now that I have you. Right. And that's what that's for. You're watching this commercial. Call now. Go buy a Honda. Go get this store. Get my product. Yes, right. You're a business. And that's why I said this is why most businesses fail is because one, they're not posting consistently. So again, they're not using the free ad agencies that they can, all of this social media. Two, they are not looking at the data to see, okay, did people like this post or this story or this, you know, this video? You got to look at the data and see what people are liking. And then last but not least, you must do a call to action. What is the point of having people look at all your stuff and telling them all about your business and giving them all this information if you're not going to have them do something that equates with them working with you? I had another, <laughs> this, this just took me down the lane because I had another client that was like, oh, I've been posting all, you know, I post all the time and nobody's buying from me, blah, blah, blah. And I said, did you ever ask for money? Correct. Did Correct. you ever ask them Correct. for anything? For anything, to do anything. No, I mean, I don't want to be salesy. And I said, but you just told me you didn't have any sales. <laughs> like, you have to have a, <laughs> you gotta me, have a strategy. Let me, let me and you have I'm to ask people. Heart. People let are me go. not going to just give you money girl, because you showed up today. Girl, like, that's girl, not girl. how this thing works. I love so, this. Uh, yeah. Let me say this. Because this is, the, you, you, I, I almost, almost jumped out of the, off this couch. You are doing people a disservice. I say this and I've said this to you. You're doing that person a disservice if you don't offer them something. If I tell you all of how great real estate is and how much money you can make and how to do business credit and how you start, and then I don't offer you anything, no help, no service, no download, no cheat sheet, no, nothing. I'm just gonna tell you this and then I'm gone. I did you a disservice because there's tons of people that are like, you know what, I will pay you to do it for me or I will pay you for you to walk me through this or help me with this. So. That's a disservice. Why would you tell me all this awesome stuff and then just leave? And people do it day. I see day it in so much. Out. I'm like, like it's you been so, no so many times I'll get on somebody's social media and I'm almost screaming like, take my money. Like right. you sold me already. Right. Now what? Now like, what? How do I, how do I do this? Do I Help do this? me. <laughs> so yeah, you, you definitely have to give them a call to action. You have to ask for the sale You do. and stop being afraid to be salesy. It's not about that. It's not. I look at my business and I know that Noelle looks at her business as a service. Yes. I am helping people. Correct. I am doing something for I am you bringing value. that you either don't know how to do for yourself, you don't have the time to do for yourself, or you recognize that it's not the best and highest use of your time. Correct. So why would I not put Help myself you with out that. there? Yeah. And we've overcome so much. You know what I mean? We've grown our businesses. Both of you, you know, well, I worked in banking and mortgage banking, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Chase, and all of these banks climbing a corporate ladder and never found any fulfillment and surely did not find riches. I will say that. And so 
I went through this journey. Why would I not tell someone a faster way, a better way, a, 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 you know, a, a more efficient way, a cheaper way? Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't you offer that to someone? You, 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 you've done these things. If you've truly done them and you've had these successes, why wouldn't you help another person? It just, it makes no sense to me. Like I said, that's why it's such a disservice. It's such a disservice. Yeah. It's such a disservice. So, okay. Oh man. All right. So let's get to the next part because this is just absolutely amazing. And we have to get to this part because like I said, Chanel Yarber is just an, a phenomenal entrepreneur. Like she said, she's had her business for nine years. She does social media. She does marketing. She knows entrepreneurship. She knows working with clients. She's growing. You know, I just see you growing, Oh, you know, just it, your inner work and just all of what you're doing to, to, to transform yourself. I'm absolutely loving it. Stand up. Let us see your shirt. Cause I, I, I know, and we always say market your business. See? This is, this is here we go. I didn't even know, but I knew she had something on about her business. <laughs> I knew it without even seeing it, guys. I knew. I love it. This is what you should do. You're you're on this interview. You will be doing a disservice not to to tell people that's what you do. So talk to me and give us a little bit a bit of history about you, Chanel. How did you get into entrepreneurship? So. Oh my goodness. My entrepreneurial journey. It took me a moment to realize that this is just who I am. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I am an entrepreneur at heart. I love empowering and helping other entrepreneurs. Um, and I'll be honest, I like, like you fought getting on social media. I fought launching into the deep waters of being an entrepreneur. Um, because I was always taught, you know, go to school, get a degree, get a good job, get yep. some benefits and yep. sit down and, you know, be great. Right, right. And be great till um, you're 65 and then, and then you can rest. rest. And I was <laughs> never fulfilled doing so. Like I was literally. No, so what no, did Chanel do in her former work. life? And I was giving people my all. I mean, I was really out here just trying to give it the whole <laughs> corporate thing and just, I'm going to work and I'm going to be a great worker. <laughs> And <laughs> it was like every job I had, Noel, they would fire me <laughs> over the, the most ridiculous thing. And I was just like, God, what is happening? Like one day I would be promoted. Right. And then the, like two weeks later, they're like, oh, we got to let you go. We and I'm like, wait go. a minute, I just got a promotion. Like I, was, I thought I was doing good. Or I would have a good review. Like, oh, you're doing exceptional. And we, you know, we love you. And then I'm in HR for something. And I'm like, wait a minute, what? And so it took me a minute. I mean, I was so depressed. I just honestly, because I I I took that as a as a, a punch to my my word. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. Talk through this because I think so many people are going to relate to this. Honestly, I, I can't say because we all have different stories. This isn't my story. Everybody in corporate America loved me, which is why it took me forever to leave. So I, but I think a lot of people relate to this story. So please go vulnerable. Tell the truth. Like what was corporate America? Because I left corporate America for a different reason you did. So, so yeah. like you said, you were depressed. They weren't happy with you. What? Yeah, yeah go no, through. It Tell was us. just Seriously. crazy. Like, I mean, I felt like I was on a yo-yo. Like I would have these really high highs and these really low lows. Yeah. And um, it got to a point where I had lost two jobs within about 11 months of each other. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> like, I got fired up at that point. I was like, oh, no. They, mm -mm. no, 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 no. I'm too smart. I know too much. I work too hard. Right. I got these two loans over here. Right. Like, y'all not about to keep playing with me. It's right, with so, the school for y'all. That is what made me say, you know what? I'm going to brand myself. So Bright Girl Media is me. Yeah. Um, it's an extension of who I am. It is my my pride and joy. I absolutely love it. Uh, people always ask, where did that name come from? Uh, and a friend of mine who is a branding expert um, and a psychiatrist actually sat down Ooh. with me. He was like, let's think about what we want to convey and who you want people to know you as. Mm. And I was like, you know what? As growing up from two years old in preschool until whenever, people always said that I was bright. Yeah. Complexion wise and smart. <laughs> Double entendre, I'm assuming bright girl, your complexion and then bright, smart. smart you know, <laughs> so people always think that they like I've had people ask me, like, are you are you bright girl because you're light skinned? And I'm like, I didn't even think of it. 
whole like I was bright, right, like, like I'm you know, knowledge, right? So it was that thing, and I guess yeah, I'm, I'm like, so I guess that works too. Um, but of course, I'm a woman, right? Um, and I love serving women entrepreneurs. Yes. That whole girl power thing, I wanted it to come forth, so that's where the girl girl came from. And then media, like yeah. this. Oh, I'm in my zone. Like, yeah. I love media. Yeah, you're good I, at it. I have two degrees in media. And anytime that I'm able to communicate and connect and all that other good stuff, I'm in my zone. And so that's where Bright Girl Media came from. So um, I promised myself that I would never, ever again put my earning power in somebody else's hands. Mm. And so that's why I became an entrepreneur. I love it. So let's break away really quickly and do a millionaire minute. We talked about really quickly being rich and being famous. Like I said, some people are more rich than they are famous. Some people are more famous than they are rich. But let's talk about how you can be both like Noelle. So like I said, I kind of started off more rich than famous, meaning I focused on my business. I focused on getting money. I wanted to have money and be successful. I didn't necessarily care about popularity or fame or anyone knowing my name. However, I've since changed my mind and I've learned there's a lot of benefit to popularity and you can turn popularity into profits. And that is how people use rich and then become famous. So let's talk about how I've done both, because like I said, rich and famous is really what you want. You don't want to be a rich person that has no notoriety. You, you really, really aren't making any impact at that point. People don't know who you are. Your message is not out there to many people. Only a small group of people are actually benefiting from what you have. But if you are popular and have some celebrity and some fame, then your message is reaching a lot more people. That is very valuable and it does increase your personal wealth and your bank account. So the goal for you should be to be rich and famous, if you so please. But if you don't like the fame, you're a private person, definitely focus on being more rich than famous. And then if you want, you can use your riches to get famous, like Noelle did. And so now you're into real estate. So you, you were working, you know, obviously corporate America. Me and you share that story. We kind of connected so much on that. And then we became entrepreneurs. You were actually not, you know, affiliated with me in any way. I had hired you. You were like my vendor. You know what I mean? And I had to honestly wait till that contract ended before I could bring you into some of the other stuff because you also do real estate and you have a great real estate story too. Talk to us about that. Yes. So... Um, woo, real estate. <laughs> so, <laughs> start where I started. You didn't get to your parents' basement, though. Where, where did your, your real estate journey begin, and where is it now? <laughs> well, it's, a, it's definitely a testimony. So I started my real estate journey back in 2005, 2006. And um, I honestly went, like, so aggressive at it because and that's just my personality anything that i'm gonna do i'm doing it right like, i'm not half right i'm either in or out that's me that's where we connected i'm in or i'm out and that's and i and i'll remind you like you told me you're in or out so let's go <laughs> let's go yeah you said you so, were in. Let's um, go. <laughs> i started way back then and i had some people that i came in contact with and they were like oh yeah we can get you these properties and blah 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 and they did they okay. did what they said they were going to do but I did not have the knowledge right. on what I was supposed to do Correct. after I got the properties and like right. how to make this into a real business, right. and how to how to know, manage how to them, what to do if something happens, like just the whole education on real. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, come down the line, you know, come 2008, 2008. <laughs> 2009. <laughs> If you listen, if you were a real estate entrepreneur then and you made it out of that, I, I salute you. There were, there were, girl, there were tons. First of all, I met them in 2009 when I was in my parents' basement. It was a ton of people that knew what they were doing. Not many of them looked like us, though. I will say that. That's all I'll say. <laughs> but that's okay. We needed to go be around some different people. <laughs> Oh my God. I went from having five properties, two cars. I was like living a life, driving my nice old BMW. You know, I was, ooh, and I was only 25 at the yep. time. Yep. So I was young. Yes. 
um, to having nothing. Yeah. Like I didn't have a pot to pee in right. or a window to throw it right. out of. Okay, Been there. it was bad. Been there. Um, I was and like, clueless, did not even know how to stop it either. It was almost like things were happening, and I didn't know what I should be doing. Like, I didn't know if there was something. I, do you, did you share this? Because I shared this. And this is why I feel like mentorship and coaching is so important now and why it changed my life and probably why you could say it changed yours is when things were going bad, I had no confidence. I had no education. I had no knowledge. I just, it was like deer in the headlights. Stuff just happened. And I just sat there like, yeah. I guess I, I guess, oh, they called. Uh, I guess I'm going through foreclosure. Uh, I guess the, I, I guess I can't pay. I just had no, I didn't do anything. I did nothing. It just happened to me. <laughs> nothing. It was just like, I felt like the rug was literally yep. being swept out from under me yes. and everybody, like the whole town was laughing at me. Yes. Like that's how I yes. felt. Yes. It, yes. it was just yes. the most ridiculous yes. and horrible feeling I've ever had in my life. And I never, ever, ever wanted anybody else to feel that way. Like I remember getting all those letters and just <laughs> all I could do was stick my head in the sand because it, nothing made sense at this right. point. It was like nothing, there's right. nothing I could do. Right. So right. I'm just going down. Yeah. The ship. Uh, right. That, right, right. It's over. The ship is sinking. sinking. I yeah. should have got on this boat. I'm so dumb. So dumb. Oh, yeah, well. so I'm dumb. I like, like I'm everything. Dumb. Like I'm not worth nothing. Right, it's right, just, right. Just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> And see, at the time, oh my gosh, I'm going to be honest with you. So at the time when we, same thing, started investing in real estate in Atlanta, 2002, 2003. Like you said, 21, 22. I'm young. You know, like you said, we were about the same age. I just turned 40. So in 2005, I was either 24 or 25, one other. And so long story short, I, same thing. I got all this stuff. Don't know what I'm doing. And then when it's, I didn't even have a college degree. And so I thought that was the problem. This is how ridiculous I was it because that's what my parents that's because you, 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 you ain't got you ain't finished your degree you're a college dropout that's why this happened to you because you you didn't finish school and so I feel like I, <laughs> I did not know that was the only answer I had oh I'm dumb I should go to school and get a college degree see my answer was you already got the degree now why don't you just go get a job Ooh. and so I started doing all these stupid jobs let me tell y'all <laughs> I didn't want to laugh at myself now, but then I was like crying, like it was not pretty. <laughs> My first job after this whole thing, I was, I became a flight attendant. Ooh. Ooh. I was like, because I was running mm. and I didn't realize that I was running. Yeah. But I was running. I was like, I'm about to be a flight attendant. Like, F all this stuff, throwing everything in the air. I'm like, I'm running away. Give me a bag. And I'm going to be on a plane. I'm good. Until the recession is. <laughs> That's it. So I'm just like <laughs> bouncing around on the East Coast, just flying around, like just doing nothing. No, just getting a low wage. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we were working in the mortgage industry, um, you know, both me and my husband. So we both got like laid off. We both have no jobs. We both have the same last name. So if we send our resumes out. They, they just look at the same name, same address. You know, it's just like we're looking for jobs. That was another thing. So stupid. I didn't think of other things. I only, I never thought entrepreneurship was the answer. I can't believe how long it took me. And I think this is where we're, we're going to pivot and give the audience what they, they need to know. How dumb those things were. And if I would have just bet on myself then and did what I did five years ago, I would have been rich five years earlier or whatever you want to call it. Instead of trying to work for other people to get rich, Oof. Okay. I, was I was already in the basement. I don't even know what I was. Where else was I? There didn't even be the lower floor in the house. <laughs> if I knew, if I just, I just needed a corner of what I know now. Like right. just a little pinch of Isn't that the truth? <laughs> what I know now as far as entrepreneurship is concerned. And I totally would have bet on myself then. And I would. Y'all, I, I don't even know where I would be right now. Yeah. But I will honestly I know say, I, would be a and I see this in a lot of people <laughs> um, that I talk to, is that or maybe not. I'd be probably all broke. of this, from the social media to the real estate to the business to whatever we're talking about, it starts here. Yes. And That's the lesson, guys. It, it all starts here. with the mindset. It's in your mindset. And because I have been so beat down in that right. real estate game, That's right. it took me to meet you. Yeah. To get confident enough to yeah. say, you know what? 
if Noelle could do it, and right. I'm sitting here looking at her, I'm eating lunch with the lady. Like I'm talking <laughs> to this lady, and she, like she went through the same thing I went through. Same thing. And now she. Like, same thing. Right. If I did it, you can do it too. And I kept telling you that. I kept telling you like, yes, I know. You was like, I have lost so bad. I was like, yes, me too. I have felt foreclosures. Yes, me too. Multiple, not just one. Yeah, me too. My credit score is bad. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and I promise you, like, I'll tell anybody, me and you, like, I I thank God for you being oh. my life, Noel. You have really been a blessing to me in more ways than And vice you know, versa. And vice versa, you know, I tell you, like attract like, you know, I felt like you came into my life. You taught me so much. I just just reciprocity. I, I, I love you to death, too. So let's talk the, the next question. That brings me to my next question. So how did mentorship change your life and your business? Absolutely. Um, it gave me the not only the confidence to be able to know that I, like, I'm standing on something. I know what I'm talking about. Um, and this system is proven. Somebody else has done it. I'm, I'm following those same proven steps rather than kind of just grasping for straws and trying to figure out stuff as you go. Yeah. Um, because as an entrepreneur, you, you have to think. Like, you have to try to figure stuff out. Yeah. And if somebody else has already taken the bumps and bruises, already applied something, right. and now they're telling you, hey, I need you to go this way. Don't go right. that way. Right. And you've invested yourself into this coaching and this mentorship and whatever. It's like it moves you to do. That's right. To listen to your coach. Do what they told you to do. That's it. Oh man, sorry to interrupt. So this is, I was just saying this to, to, to another person on my team about listening to your coach. So that, you know, if you guys want to watch this series, we have, a, uh, I have an interview that I've done with my coach, you know, the actual person that coached me, you know, my, not my last coach, I actually have a coach now. <laughs> I, I never stop. You know, I, now I need to figure out how to be, be a billionaire. Seriously, like how do I b build and run a billion dollar company? That's that's a thousand million, guys. That's not a lot. All these people with billionaire in their shirt. That's a thousand million. That's a lot, people. That's not easy to do. I know people got these shirts on, but it ain't easy to do. And it's not that many billionaires. So I have to learn from someone who at least makes hundreds of millions of dollars. And that person is not going to coach and mentor me for free. They, they, that's how they got, not how they got their money through coaching, but they just wouldn't waste their time, energy and money on someone that they don't think is invested in their own self. So I was in a coaching program. I've been in coaching programs because that's that I attribute my success to my coaches and my mentor. My mentor was making two million dollars. Like I said, I've sat where you sat, Chanel, where I'm sitting across from this lady. She making two million dollars a year. I'm making two hundred thousand dollars a year. Now, I could go sit in a room with people that make a hundred thousand and I'm the big woman on campus. Or I could go feel small in a room with millionaires so I could become that. D d you, what do you think of that? It's so humbling. Like you have to, you have to be ready for that. Yeah. You have to be ready to humble yourself. Especially yeah. if you are used to being that girl or that guy in your circle. <laughs> you have to be ready to sit with people who are bigger than you and where like there's nothing you can really even contribute to this conversation because why? Like right. and that's the room you should want to be in. Listen. <laughs> That's the room you should want to be in. That's where your growth is. Yes. How yes. would you possibly grow if you're always the smartest person in the room? Oh, the richest person in the room. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I mean, just being in those circles, being coached, being mentored, being poured into, like, think about what that really says. And what you just said about, you know, somebody that has hundreds or you know thousands of millions of dollars yeah. and they are taking their time, time. to pour into to you and tell you about their business their proprietary secrets their business structure their business model their, their where they get money from like she changed my she took me to a millionaire she really did with just opening up monetizing things, how you package things, how you price things. That was invaluable information that I just could not get from my parents or my coworkers or, you know, my spouse or whoever, my friends. None of them knew these things that she knew. So I just didn't, I don't, I don't even know another way to get there. Yeah. It's the easiest, fastest it, way. It's like know, a toll road. That's the other thing too, is, is being able to, because when you get to a certain point, you'll have to tune out 
all of those voices you just that's right. your spouse and your, I mean, you know. I'm yeah, your spouse, because so they got, got their own it. life. <laughs> You're not married, I'm married. Yes, you may you may have to tune out your spouse. Again, no, no breaking up marriages, but sometimes just tuning that out. You have your own vision. Sometimes your spouse can't see your vision, even if they love you to death. The end. Yeah, and sometimes it takes you to be on the on the train tracks and for your train to be moving, and then you pull it out the station, and they're like, "Oh, they going somewhere. Let me catch up." Exactly, <laughs> true. right? So you have to be you have to be have the fortitude and the mental strength to cut some of those um, conversations that are really not feeding you and really not want. That's what coaching and mentorship for me did. Because again, going back to the mindset piece, um, just being able to hear the way that somebody that steps ahead of me thinks. Yeah. And then I'm sitting here like, man, I didn't even, like, that was, I, I couldn't have conjured that out of myself. Right. And so, yeah. so many people, they're trying to go it alone and trying to do this thing by themselves. And it's like, you don't even know what you don't know. Right. And it's so silly. And they think that they're safe. They don't have the money to do it. And if you, I mean, when I, and I, I'm not saying coaching, mentorship, school, universities, wherever you go, if you're educating yourself and it's truly education that's specific to you, you know, not just general information. Again, you can get general information on YouTube and podcasts and all these things and start learning generally about something. Absolutely nothing. No, not to that. But if you say you're going for this and this is your business, your life, how you're going to earn all of this money, you're, you're going to have to you're going to have to invest in that. There's just no it doesn't even make sense not to. Why wouldn't you want to? Now you could do what Chanel has done. So now let's talk about how you pivot from doing to teaching and monetizing that because you learn something, you do it, and then you teach it. So you're an entrepreneur. Now you're mentoring and coaching. Yeah, I, and I love it. Yeah. I love, I, <laughs> I love being able to hear somebody say, this is what I want to do. Yeah. I want to build this. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, because that's where, like, I'm in my zone at this point. Right. I'm like, oh, you can do this, you can do that, you can do this, you can do that. Yeah. Um, and being able to give them, because I've always just been an idea person as it is. Right. Like, I just, I'm never without an idea. <laughs> um, but to be able to go and guide them and see where they're getting old, like they're getting ready to jump in this manhole here. Right. And help them not do that. Because I did that. Right. And oh no. Right. Um, that means the world to me. Because it means now to me personally yeah. that all that mess that I told y'all about when I lost everything was not in vain. It was not for not. Right? Like, right. now this means something. I had to go right. through this so that I could show somebody how not to. Right. And that for me. That's the best. Like, the fact that you're successful is why you could coach someone. If you were still that person that was flying around as a, as a, as a flight attendant, oh, you, you, you're not, you can't coach and mentor anyone. So it's almost in your success that will bring you more success to other people. Amazing. So where are, what is next for Chanel Yarber and Bright Girl Media? Talk to us and tell us what is next for you, what you're working on and where people can find you. So. The first thing is that I do have a book that I have written all of my story and what I've shared and all my tragedies and triumphs and even the flight attendant story. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my book is Fear Not. Yes. And so it is out. It's in print. And, I love it. Um, I'll share the link so that you all can get it. If you Absolutely. Can it. The link is um, there. You can reach me on all social media channels at Bright Girl Media. I am on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. I'm even on LinkedIn. Uh, wherever you, you are on social media at Bright Girl Media. You can also visit my website at brightgirl.media. That is spelled B-R-I-G-H-T-G-I-R-L <laughs> dot M-E-D-I-A. Or... I'm also offering anybody who's viewing this or anybody who's listening to this um, access to my Facebook ads seminar. So you can go ahead and you can visit www.chanelsfreeseminar.com and you can have access to learn how to promote your own business on Facebook, 
And I've heard you have a gift. You know, I, I, as, as a guest on, you know, Noel Randall's show, I make all of my guests, all of them give a gift that is what is required. So what is the gift that you have for our audience today? So for the audience today, you will have access to a mini course where you will learn how to um, not only expand your reach, but expand your engagement on social media. And so if you want access to that, you can also visit my website at brightgirl.media. And I want you to send me a message and say, hey, Chanel, I heard you or I saw you on Noel's uh, video and I want access to the course and I will open it up to you for absolutely free. Woo! Awesome, awesome, awesome. And that is truly bringing value and giving back. And this is why you're amazing at your at what you do. Like I said, Chanel, this is a true story. We met in Dallas. This is truly the person that helped me transform my whole attitude about social media and then change my income with what social media and marketing my business on social media, it, this is the person. So she knows, she's a wealth of information. I appreciate you sharing all of this information, Chanel. This has been absolutely amazing. I thank you so much for your time. I cannot wait to read your book and see all of the successes that we have to come. Hopefully you'll come back on the show and give us some updates. Oh yes, oh yes, I'd love to, I'd awesome. love to. OMG, did you hear all of what Chanel shared and how she has taken so many businesses, including her own, to the next level through social media, putting out ads, and of course, giving away freebies and downloads so that you can get new clients easily and at an inexpensive price. So this is my opportunity to offer you my free book. Go to Noelle's free book, that's N-O-E-L-L-E-S free, F-R-E-E -E, book, noellesfreebook.com. And check out my new book, Real Estate Millionaire Secrets, where I share with you all of how I've done all of this strategy, how I've built up my real estate portfolio, started six businesses and got many of them over six figures within a year, and how I now get to put out production, media, write books, podcasts, and all of the fun stuff that I enjoy doing. You can learn all about it and how you can do it too in my new book, Real Estate Millionaire Secrets. Again, I'm giving it away absolutely free at noellesfreebook.com. I wanna make sure that you have all of the tools, all of the knowledge, and all of the resources that you need to be successful. This is Noel to your success.